I hope you are doing good. I hope your brain is not yet fried with JavaScript. Uh, but I get that. Once you understand these behind the scene basics of JavaScript, it becomes like a very natural uh, programming language and you start having fun with it. Okay. So, so far we are on to just a quick glance, uh, not nothing much. We have created a new style of creating the object through the functional way and we are passing some parameters on that and we are saying uh, this dot first name is first name, this dot course count is course count and it's creating us uh, the object and it's creating a unique instances through this user. We also saw that we have a method here but we didn't took advantage of this method yet. This method actually just directly gives me a console.log and I am all working on it. Okay, great, fine. Let's just say without even dumping this, so I'm not gonna do a console log of Hitesh now, neither for the Sam, but rather I want to take advantage of this method. So the new instance that is created is Hitesh, and Hitesh can now actually take access of all the properties that are defined. As soon as I put a dot, I can access first name, course count, get course count as well. This get course count is a method, so I'm gonna run this like this. And similar to this on the Sam, I'm gonna go ahead, I'll move this here, it looks good. And Sam is also gonna get an access of get course count, just like this. Now let's see what is happening up there. Let's clean the console, run this again. The course count is two for Hitesh, great, makes sense. And course count is one for Sam. So this proves the point that every object is unique and every single function that is running up here is unique as well. Now, coming on to the point, there is no method right now which says get first name. Okay, you can grab it directly. I'm not saying you cannot. You can grab it directly. You can go ahead and say something like this. I want to have a log and you can say Hitesh dot first name and this is gonna print the first name. I don't doubt you on that. Uh, I know you can do this and it gives me Hitesh up here but I have to do this console log here. I want to create a method which is get course count similar to this get first name. Can I do this? I have a couple of ways of doing it. And let me try to have a little bit of your imaginary hat. Let's just say you are working these kinds of feature in Angular framework or maybe React or any other framework. In those framework, if you want to add such more features, you don't go directly into where those objects or where those things are defined in that framework. That would be like really nonsense job of going uh, into those source code and having it. This is not how we achieve the task. So in such bigger things, when you're creating some objects or some properties, uh, we have actually a better way of doing it. Shortly in here, it looks like, hey, I can just go up here, hit enter and do it. But on a bigger scale project, when you want to add some properties, uh, into this main core definition and that should be accessible to Hitesh, that should be accessible to Sam. Uh, this is not how we want to have it. So what are the other ways of dealing with that? Let me show you that. All of these user, we saw that they have an access of something known as proto, underscore, underscore, proto, underscore, underscore. But in order to access that through programmatic way, we just say user dot prototype. And it doesn't really mean to say always user, whatever the object you are creating through this functional approach, you can just say user.prototype. And in here, you can access or give them more properties, or you can give them more functions, getters, setters, whatever you like, you can actually inject them up here. So what I can do here is I'm going to give it a new method here. And that's going to be simply get uh, first name, let's just call it as get first name. Now, as soon as I give it the access of get first name, I'm gonna go ahead and do it like a functional way. So let's just call it as a function and then just the regular function stuff. So let's just go ahead and do it like this. Now here, I'm gonna take a leap of faith and I'm gonna assume that since I'm designing this property here or kind of a method which is get first name, I'm taking a leap of faith that this first name actually is available to me. So let's just say this method actually does a console.log and this says, your first name is and then put and I'm going to use a dollar sign and I'm going to say this dot first name. Now if the first name is not going to be available in this entire user, I am actually writing a program which is going to crash. So there should be surely some checking. But in this case, I'm sure this is happening. Now notice here, I'm not touching the actual definition. I'm actually injecting some of the things from outside of this and I'm 100% okay with that. Now the advantage of this 
every time a new instance is being created, it's the job again of this new keyword to even find all these such prototypes which are defined and inject that further in my user object. And if I come back here, I can say Hitesh dot get first name and I can run this method and I can do same for this one here as well. I can say Sam dot get first name and run it like that. So notice the difference. I never went into the object. I'm just doing it outside of the object all the time. Let's go ahead and run this program. When I run this program, notice your first name is Hitesh and your first name is Sam. So unique properties are coming up, but I'm able to actually inject. Now just onto a sidebar, this is actually handled pretty much little bit, teeny tiny nicely in the TypeScript. But hey, this is not a course for TypeScript. We are just learning the JavaScript, so let's keep it that way. Okay, now I hope you might be getting this more of an idea that why this proto is here. This is super, super instruct, uh, constructor here. You can even inject your constructors, can write your own constructor. Sometimes we even set our getters and setters to actually override these properties. So everything that's available in the prototype, you can actually override that or you can inject your own stuff in here. So if somehow I load this entire script onto the browser, what you're gonna notice that this proto, if I just drop it down on the browser, you're gonna see that now this proto has this property get first name, which is technically an function and is trying to access all this up here. Now surely some of you might say that this is not really good that this some outside guy is able to access all of that. We have ways of restricting the things and all of it, but I think that's not, this is not the day for talking uh, all about that. So there we go. Now you know why this proto exists and now things are getting much more clear to you. JavaScript is not looking that much of a havoc to you and you're enjoying all of these things. Okay, so that's it for this one and hit that subscribe and let's catch up in the next one.